Good morning, one and all. Can you all hear me? I am sorry. Drown out my noise as we sing together 474, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. gathered as God's people in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also We have gathered together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, and strengthened by sharing God's gifts, we may give ourselves to the service of God and all people. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we confess together, asking, our Father's forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen.
Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your selfishnesses, open your eyes to God's truth, and strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> collect for today. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that, in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive, reigning with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for the readings. The first readings from uh, Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. Paul declares the uniqueness of Christ as God's Son and our position as his children. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. 
and you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death. So as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I'm now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this majesty, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are the pure in heart, our second hymn, 391. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the course of their journey, Jesus came to a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who sat down at the Lord's feet and listened to him speaking. Now, Martha, who was distracted with all the servants, serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister is leaving me to do the serving all by myself? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, he said, you worry and fret about so many things, and yet few are needed, indeed only one. It is Mary who has chosen the better part, and it is not to be taken from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ.
Lord, fill my mouth with useful stuff and shut it when I've said enough. Amen. Please sit. One or two of you may have seen this sign before. Are you sweating whilst putting petrol in your car? Feeling sick when paying for it? You probably have the coronavirus. It must have been a little over 50 years ago now that a staggering message was broadcast around the entire globe. Houston, the eagle has landed. Do you remember that? It's when the man landed on the moon and first walked on it. And it may surprise you that your mobile phone has probably 100,000 times the computing ability of the computers that got people onto the moon and safely back home communicating between the astronauts and mission control in Houston. My question this morning is a very simple one. Where is your mission control located? As followers of Jesus, the saviour of any and all humanity, a simple answer might be Jesus. And that's okay, that's absolutely fine. If we spell it out a little, Jesus is all of God that men and women can relate to, plus lots, plus infinitely more. And God is a spirit, a spirit of infinite, compassionate, merciful love. The presence then of the Holy Spirit, i.e. God, is spelt L-O-V-E. How are you and I to keep in touch with mission control? This is all stuff that you know. I'm just rolling it together in, in little words. Given that mission is, the mission is love in action, it seems that if you're anything like me, we are always in need of more power to love, to love ourselves properly, to love others, to love all of God's glorious creation. And whilst we need air for every breath in this life, we do need prayer for every breath in this life and the next. Prayer simply means paying attention to our mission control base. That is called our spirit, traditionally buried very deep inside our souls, or as some people prefer to say in slightly more modern language, our hearts. For here is where we find Jesus. Quiet, prayerful, paying attention to the things of the Spirit. Or as the Gospel reading we just heard put it, like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha's problem was not that she was busy not that she was clattering the pots and pans, uh, serving out the meal, um, being of use in the kitchen, etc., etc. That's not a problem. Had she been able to do that uh, peacefully and generously, she would have been as much in communion with Jesus as Mary was. Her problem was not her activity, it was her envy of Mary. And for that reason, it's not surprising, Jesus said, Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The 
practical outcome of such practice has been long told by that remarkable uh, Bishop of Geneva a few hundred years ago, now called St. Francis de Sales. And he wrote this, it's very simple. Do not look forward to the changes and chances of this life in fear. Rather, look to them with hope that, as they arise, God, whose you are, will deliver you out of them. He has kept you hitherto. Do you but hold fast to his dear hand, and he will lead you safely through all things. And when you cannot stand, he will carry you in his arms. We stand to declare our common faith. <clears throat> Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of that Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the lives of Mary and Martha, friends of Jesus. We ask your blessing on Martin, <clears throat> this congregation, this church, and all in our diocese. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> hear our prayer. Spirit of God, we pray for your church often a busy community, broken and preoccupied with so many things. We pray for your leading to draw us closer to one another as we draw closer to you. Please help us to find the balance between active service of your kingdom and time to sit with devotion in your presence. We pray for our brothers and sisters in our local communities and for all searching for meaning in their lives. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your world, often a busy place, conflicted and preoccupied with so many things. We pray for leaders and all in authority. Lord, come to them in the quiet spaces of busy diaries and lead them in the secret spaces of the heart. May they reflect on your will so that a right vision 
and his sense of priorities are restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saviour God, we pray for your people, often busy, challenged and preoccupied with so many things. We pray for wisdom in all our daily living, especially when there is pressure to conform to norms in conflict with your will. Father, open our hearts to show one another the love that you show us. May we work together for the dignity and flourishing of all, through your Son who makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your healing touch to rest upon those who are sick, your strength for those who are tired, and your wisdom and love to encourage those who struggle with life and its troubles. Lord, we pray, especially today, for Olga, Raya and Polya, our dear Ukrainian family. They've traveled to Ukraine to see if Taras, Olga's husband, could be allowed out of the country, as Polya, their young daughter, urgently needs a major operation. Lord, please keep this family safe in the midst of increased missile attacks. May they stay well so that Polya can have this operation. And may they be comforted, Lord, by our prayers for them. In a moment of quietness now, we pray for all those who've asked for our prayers and any others known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, Lord, be with the dying as you welcome those who have died in faith to your eternal presence and affection, and to remember them with love and thanks. Remember Shirley Gardner and Wolf Lieberschutz, who passed away last week. We pray for their families who mourn them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, may your presence be seen clearly in who we are and in what we do each day throughout this coming week. We pray that your joy and your love will flow freely in us and through us as we take up your yoke and follow where you lead us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We say together, Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, that when we meet in his name, and pray according to his mind. You will be among us and hear our prayer. In your love and mercy, fulfill our desires and give us your greatest gift, which is to know you, the only true God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand for the peace. It was after his death and resurrection that the disciples gathered together in the upper room and Jesus appeared among them saying, peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the risen Lord, whose peace be always with you. Thank you.
thank you. We offer one another a funny sign of peace. One day normal service will be resumed. So our next hymn is number 310, 310. Generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, at your table we present this money, symbol of the work you have given us to do. Use it, use us in the service of your word, to the glory of your name. Amen. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Resounding praise belongs to you, Alpha and Omega, for yours is the beginning and ending of all things. Through your word you have created the visible and the invisible, and in him all things hold together. By shaping a people bound in love, you fashioned a covenant that would never end. In the fullness of time, your word became flesh. 
you sent among us the firstborn of all creation, pleased to dwell in human form. Through him you have reconciled all things in heaven and earth, making peace through the blood of his cross. Before every beginning and beyond every ending, you call us to be your disciples and destine us to be your saints. And so we give you thanks in the company of angels and archangels as we join the everlasting hymn. God, our companion, as you drew Mary of Bethany to your son's feet, hungry for his word, so bring us to this tea table, hungry for Jesus. As your church remembers Christ's saving passion, come upon your church in the power of your Holy Spirit to dwell with us in the fullness of your presence and feed us till we want no more. Sanctify this bread and cup that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, who, at supper with his disciples, took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of Mary and Martha, your resurrected Son has the words of eternal life. Give your church grace, like Mary, to linger where Jesus is. Grant us patience to abide among those who look to you in trust and hope, and to stand with any who have no one to stand by their side. Where your children hunger and thirst for companionship, bring them new friends in Christ. Where they suffer from famine, be their bread of life. Open your heaven that the one who has reconciled all things in his death and resurrection may present us holy and blameless before you and your word made flesh may welcome us to the banquet of the riches of your glory, in the power of your Spirit, Holy Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As this bread is broken, so may we be broken. As Christ was broken and resurrected, so may we be made whole. So let us draw near with faith to receive all that God offers us through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us share together in remembrance that Christ died and lives for us today and be fed by his spiritual gifts freely offered us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Um, the body of Christ.
Together we pray. You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end, behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God forever and ever. Amen. Notices. No particular special notices other than what might be on the sheet today? Good. Too hot. Please stand. May the light of Christ pierce the darkness of the world. May the love of Christ live your spirits and gladden each day. May the peace of Christ fill your hearts and minds. May Christ our Saviour walk by your side today and all your days. And the blessing of our eternal God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and evermore. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, number 558. So, when we're ready and not before, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.